is going on guys this is tony from team divine pro here uh coming at you with another segment on improving your your way towards game so uh first question though uh to all of you those who watch this video um please tell me may, perhaps in the comment section or anything give me your thoughts on if i should do some on vanguard because i don't know i'm thinking maybe vanguard people would prefer would like this too because I do have subscribers that are for Vanguard and for Wage Wars, so that's pretty cool. And anyways, on to the topic at hand. I'll put two together today since I haven't done it in a one in a while. I'll put one. I'll combine the thing of. I will combine number ratios, so deck ratios for levels and everything, and I will combine possible. And I'll put together also the, I want to say, I'll say uh, 1 to clock. Yeah, let's go with that. So I'll go with the 1 to clock and the deck ratio of the cards. So in a deck, there are 50? Yeah, 50 cards for wage shorts. And good ratios for, for wage shorts would be, well, it turns out that it's actually an option to play climaxes, but I would highly suggest to play like eight climaxes. So, but anyways, eight climaxes necessity. Nothing more to say. Event cards, on the other hand, can be iffy. You can play event cards if you like. Event cards will modify your deck a little bit, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now for level zeros. Level zeros have the good note. You can have a good range between the best I found would be between 15 or 16. No less, no more, because uh, 15 or 16 is pretty ideal since you have cards that are boosters and all that. This is not just for SAO, by the way. It's anything. Uh, level ones, I would suggest playing. Well, for level ones, at first, I would also first suggest playing at least two blockers maybe three, but I would suggest playing at least two blockers that are one zeros because they're good. Now, depending on what what thing you were taking, like Axel World might have a better one, so you might want to play three of those, but for decks that have only the assist 1k and then the other 1k, then I just suggest playing two to three. I prefer personally prefer two because that's just how I am. And then you would probably want to balance it off with a 3k two one, or in this case, since SAO has them, Three fives, one ones. I put two. You can put one instead, but I have enough room. And event cards cannot be retrieved. Whereas, if it's a character card, think about when you have these uh, salvage cards because they can retrieve them. So think about that. As for level ones, you probably want to play between the area of eleven to twelve. Well, actually, ten to twelve. Ten to twelve, I would suggest playing. But and for level uh, this is deck is incomplete, by the way, so I'm just putting ratios here. For levels five, uh, 2, I would suggest playing between 5 and 6. Yeah, 5 and 6. And for level 3s, I would always suggest between 7 and 8. So now, how I make the decks usually would be to... Well, first I do my research into what cards are good and all that. But then afterwards, I'd figure things out, like uh, if I want to play event cards... And you, if you have a really good event card, then yeah, play one or two. But I play two since they're block cards, and I do like blocking. But in my deck of uh, Guilty Crown, remember, Truth of the Void Genome. I only play one, but that's just because it has a high cost, and you can't play it early. You have to play it late, and it's sometimes dead because you want to use other cards. So you just play one. But anyways, you'd all, most of the time, you'd start off by picking the climaxes and the events that you want to play. Unless if you have like some event combo, which is absurd. And then you pick how many level 3s you want. Then afterwards, you pick your level 0s. Then you pick... Then you can pick either to do the level 1s or the level 2s right away. I would think about putting level 1s first and then level 2s. Because level 2s, you... In Waste Words, really, you can just ride out the game by only playing level 1s, and then skipping, kind of skipping level 2, because level 2 isn't as important as it is to get to level 3, because you can, 
by then, usually your opponent should be able to rush you into level 3 before you really have two turns at level 2, unless if you just climax like a boss. Now, that concludes it for deck ratios, and then I will talk about when to clock. So clocking is the thing where you just put one card into your clock, so clock is your thing, like your damage counter. Clock, you can have cards in hand, and then you get to draw, you can get to draw two cards. So now, when should you clock is a big question of how you play. So when you are starting off, highly suggested, even if you're from level zeros to one, and almost a two to clock. So you'd always want to clock one turn because that gives you technically a plus one. Even though you're dropping one card, you draw one card. So you're getting hand advantage. And hand advantage is very good in this game. Now, as to what to clock, uh, well, let's finish when to clock. When to clock is, uh, you can clock every turn, as I said, up until two. And then at two, you will have to be really decisive. If you're at five, if you're at 5 damage, by all means clock and then you can by all means you should clock. Unless if you have a changer and you want to heal, then I'd suggest going with the changer first. Heal and then next turn maybe claw then then you're done. But in situations like this and you, I don't have a changer, I would just for sure just clock so then I can no whoa, no, no never mind. Sorry, there was only one there's six, sorry. Then, if you have a changer, then maybe just keep it on the field so that you can change and heal if you have a healing change. Or, if you have 6 and then you, and you're at level 2 already, so level 2, then by all means, clock and go to level, go to level 3, because level 3 you can at least push for harder numbers. And that would be how to do it. Now, if you're halfway through, if you're halfway through and your field isn't very optimal, like you have like, Three, two open spaces, and you have, uh, say, maybe four cards in hand, then I would clock, yeah, I would definitely clock just because of the fact that you need more cards, so then, like this, you have more options as to what to play, but if you were further down the line, say, to here, then maybe it isn't a good idea to clock, unless if you have a backup plan and you have enough cards in your hand. Because it all depends on how many cards you have in hand and what your opponent's field looks like. If they're going to completely wipe the floor with you, unless if you clock, then you, by all means, clock. If they're not, and they're still at, like, a lower game state, then just perhaps save it so that you don't you don't die. Because some decks, if you're at 6, they can bring you all the way to level 4 before you even blink. So that's really important to recognize to recognize in certain decks, because certain decks can do that, and it's very scary. But apart from that, nothing else much needs much saying, because hand advantage is the main point, and that is the main thing of the deck. I think that is... Oh yeah, right. Now... Clocking what what to clock is another story. I can probably do that in the next video, but I would suggest Yeah, I'll do that in the next video. It'll be part of climaxes because what type of climaxes because people there are beginners in way shorts and some people do like to know what type of climaxes there are. So I will come back to you at that later. But hope you enjoy this video guys. Please uh like, favorite, or comment or whatever. Uh, it really helps out. And as always, this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro signing off.